Lady Snowblood is a 1973 Japanese film that's directed by Toshio Fujita. So Lady Snowblood was actually last month's subscriber poll winner, and this is a film that I've heard about for such a long time, so I was really happy that I'm finally getting the chance to watch this film and talk about it. But just to cut right to the chase, I thought this film was awesome. I had a great time with it, which is really no surprise to me. And I know that lately I've been saying that every movie that I've seen is great, but what am I supposed to do? You guys just have such fire recommendations and requests. Recently, I reviewed the new horror sensation, Skin of Marink, and I also reviewed the Czech New Wave film, Daisies, and spoiler alert, I thought both of those films were great. But when it comes to Lady Snowblood, I think it's appropriate to just go ahead and discuss the elephant in the room, the really obvious notion that Lady Snowblood is clearly an inspiration for not only Tarantino's filmmaking style, but obviously for his film Kill Bill. And I don't want to spend too much time discussing how similar this film is to Kill Bill, because I want to spend more time discussing this film on its own merits. But yeah, let's go ahead and get out of the way. This film is a lot like Kill Bill. I mean, within its style, within its structure, uh, within its characters and motivations. I mean, you got some freeze frame moments. You got the jet powered blood trajectory. Uh, you got the main character having a kill list and is out for vengeance the entire film. There's also that superwoman element to her character where she just defies all logic from time to time. And Tarantino even uses the opening title song, Flower of Carnage, that's actually performed by the main actress in this film, Meiko Kaji. He incorporates that song into Kill Bill, so he's, he's very overt about it. He's not hiding it at all the level of inspiration that he took from this film. And one quick fun fact, Kill Bill obviously shed a lot of light on Lady Snowblood, giving it a lot more exposure to American audiences, and made it to where the actress, Maiko Kaji, was able to come out with singles and write new music, and overall just have a lot more supporters and listeners so that's just a really cool thing that came out of the existence of Kill Bill. But yeah, now it's time to talk about Lady Snowblood on its own merit and in its own regards. Um, just right off the bat, I think this film is just absolutely dripping with all kinds of personality. I mean, this film is actually based on a manga, and I think the director, Toshia, was really able to translate this onto the big screen in an excellent way because it really captures that kind of animated and exaggerated style that is present in manga. There's just a lot of different stylistic choices that we witness throughout the experience that really elevates it and gives it that animated feel. As I mentioned, we have this high powered, you know, blood spray that happens every now and again. You have chapters, you have narration, you have freeze frames, you have zoom ins and zoom outs, uh, you have rapid fire editing, you have cross dissolves, and all of this does make it feel more animated and cartoony, but not so goofy to the point where you know, we can't really take anything that's happening in the story seriously. It does strike a good balance between drama and character substance and story substance to the point where we can have a blast with what's happening in its style, but also still care about the characters and the outcome. Which again, is a huge staple of Tarantino's style. That is a gigantic thing as to why audiences really love him because he's able to, you know, amplify everything in a way that makes it feel fun and energetic and really animated, but at the same time, you know, actually care about the drama that's happening in the story. And obviously, I absolutely loved the character of Lady Snowblood played by Meiko Kaji because her character and the way that it's embodied is so eloquent with her brutality. Throughout the film, she's just slicing and dicing groups of men and making it seem so effortless. And I think that confidence that's radiating out of her character and out of the performance, by the way, is what makes her character so much fun to watch. And yes, the backstory revolving around her character as to why she is seeking vengeance throughout the film is another thing that really helps the audience root for her throughout the film. And one interesting aspect of her backstory is that the vengeance that she's seeking is actually bestowed upon her through lineage. It's not something that directly impacted her life, but her life was just set up in this particular way to where she almost has no choice but to honor her mother. But another thing that I absolutely loved about this film, and might be my favorite aspect of the film, is the cinematography. I mean, there are some absolutely stunning shots in this film. I mean, just the way it's framed, the way it's lit, the color palette and art direction in general is just seriously eye-popping stuff and is something that is incredibly timeless. And the cinematography overall just really elevates moments in this movie, whether it be the more intense, dramatic moments between characters, but also the landscape wide shots that we get in this film are really gorgeous, but 
the thing that I just thought was absolutely breathtaking were a lot of the shots of snowfall in this film. Uh, I mean, pretty much right at the beginning, which by the way, the, the title sequence of this film is great. And the opening sequence of this film really hooks you and gets you incredibly engaged. But the snowfall that's captured in this film in general, I think is so gorgeous and so seamless. We also get a shot of bloody snowfall in this film. And it's just so cool to see in a film. And as I said, it's captured in such a cool and breathtaking way. And really the biggest criticism that I do have of this film is the fact that it feels too long. And I feel like it feels too long because of how it's paced and structured. Because as I mentioned before, it's divided up in chapters. And the way that these chapters are paced out, it's presented in a way that kind of makes you feel like in two or three different moments, the film is actually wrapping up and it's over. But you come to realize that we have another 30 minutes or so of the film. And for me personally, there were two or three moments that happened before the actual ending where I thought it could have also been great if it ended there. But the final chapter does build up to a really awesome fight sequence that is actually pretty important in terms of character. And the ending to the film itself, I really ended up enjoying. So at the end of the day, I'm really glad that the final chapter builds up to something that I feel like is satisfying and worth the payoff. And I mean, overall, it does kind of feel silly to say that this film feels a bit too long because it's not a long movie at all. It's only an hour and a half or so. But again, I just think the way that it's paced and structured makes it feel longer than it actually is. But it definitely ends on a note that makes you want to immediately watch the sequel. I mean, I am pretty much at this point dying to see the sequel. I'm really glad that the Criterion release for this film comes with the sequel because this is something that I'm definitely going to be buying next Criterion season. So I'm going to give Lady Snowblood a soft 8 out of 10. Yeah, the character of Lady Snowblood is such an amazing character. Personally, I think she's one of the strongest and iconic female characters in cinema history. But that's all I got to say about Lady Snowblood. If you really enjoyed what I had to say about the film, just give it a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content.